Walk as God has called you to walk. No more excuses. God has made it very clear in the Bible, which is a life manual. He has made it very clear as to how he wants us to walk and how he does not want wants us to walk. God makes it very clear regarding the things we ought to do and the things we ought not to do. So, for example, <clears throat> some of the things that God tells us to do is treat others how you want to be treated. Pray for those who hurt you. He says, feed the hungry. <clears throat> he says, love your neighbor as yourself. He says, love the Lord your God with all your soul, all your mind, all your strength. He says, deny the flesh. <clears throat> he says, forgive others. He says, walk in the spirit. He says, pray that you do not fall into temptation. And these are just a few of the many things God tells you to do. All right. There are also things God tells us not to do. For example, don't lie. Don't steal. Don't use God's name in vain. Don't disrespect your parents. Don't walk in a way that is worldly. Like most of the world walk by default mode. Don't be lukewarm. And so on and so forth. Again, these are just a few examples of what God tells us do not do. <clears throat> when you walk... As God has told you to walk, you will reap the fruits of your obedience. You will receive the rewards of your obedience. But when you walk in a way that God tells you do not walk, you, again, you will reap the fruits of your disobedience. You will reap the fruits of your rebellion. What does that mean? Well, the Bible tells us rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, right? So when you're reaping the fruits of your rebellion, when you're reaping the fruits of your disobedience, it's like bringing witchcraft upon you. So <clears throat> we rebel and then destruction comes upon us. We rebel and then curses come upon us, on, our, on us, in our lives, on our families. And then we say, and then we blame God and we say, well, if God loved me, why would he let this happen? If God was real, he would have stopped that from happening, right? <clears throat> but that's like drinking poison and dying and then say, well, if God was real, I wouldn't have died. No, the consequences of your action, the consequences of drinking poison leads to death. Maybe you don't die and you become uh, severely sick internal you have internal sickness and then you say well if god was real he would take the sickness away from me well if god was real i wouldn't be sick if god loved me i wouldn't be sick no you're suffering the consequences of your choices to drink poison nowhere in the bible does god tell you drink poison i'm using poison as an example let's replace poison with drugs nowhere in the bible does god tell you to use drugs does god tell you to use heroin or cocaine or get drunk in front in fact over and over in the bible god tells you do not get drunk, right? So then you get drunk <clears throat> and you have a car accident. And you, you lose a limb or two. And then you say, <clears throat> if God was real, why would he let my son get in a car accident and lose his legs? But once again, you're suffering the consequences that drunk driver is suffering the consequences of their own actions nowhere in the bible does god tell you get drunk and start to joyride in front in fact the bible tells you do not get drunk okay so <clears throat> so your poison that you drink and you become very sick and then your poison could be anything it could be idolatry adultery lying stealing drunkenness drugs being unfaithful to your spouse it could be anything i'm using poison as an example so replace the poison with whatever your rebellion is and the same applies to that if you're walking in ways that rebel against god you will suffer the consequences of your choices <clears throat> the bible tells us in Deuteronomy chapter 27 verses 15 through 26 cursed is the one who makes an idol 
the thing detestable to the Lord, the work of skilled hands, and sets it up in secret. So when you start creating idols, <clears throat> and then worshipping the idol as though it's God, the Bible tells you, cursed is that person. Cursed is the one who dishon dishonours their father and mother. So if you see that you're dishonouring your mother and your father and bad things are coming upon you and the worst things are coming upon you because you are suffering the consequences of your rebellious nature. Cursed is the one who moves their neighbour's bound boundary stone. Cursed is the one who leads the blind astray on the road. Cursed is the one who withholds justice from the foreigner, the fatherless or the widow. Cursed is the one who sleeps with his father's wife, for he dishonours his father's bed. Cursed is the one who has sexual relations with any animal. Cursed is the one who sleeps with his sister, the daughter of his father or the daughter of his mother. Cursed is the one who sleeps with his mother-in-law. Cursed is the one who kills their neighbour secretly. Cursed is the one who accepts a bribe to kill an innocent person. Cursed is the one who does not uphold the words of the law by carrying them out. You bring curses and destruction upon your own life. It's like drinking that poison and then become, becoming terminally sick and then saying, why is God doing this to me? God is not doing that to you. The curse is in the sin itself. When Adam and Eve ate from that forbidden fruit you need to ask yourself what is the forbidden fruit of your life what are you feeding off that god specifically says do not do that's the forbidden fruit of your life right when adam and eve took off that forbidden fruit and ate it the curse was in the sin God says, do not eat from this tree, from this fruit. The fact that you go to take this fruit and eat from it, you are entering into sin. The curse is inside the sin. So when you eat from this forbidden fruit, you bring the curse up on yourself. It's not God that's sitting up in heaven and saying, okay, I'm waiting to see who sins so I can send the curse over there and send the curse over there it's not like that the curse is already embedded within the sin so when you sin the curse being already in the sin you bring the curse upon yourself all right let's go to matthew matthew 5 Matthew 5, chapter 3, verse 12. Just as the curse is within the sin, the blessing is within doing that which is righteous. So when the Bible tells you, pray for those who curse you, when you do that, there's a blessing in that. When the Bible says feed the hungry, when you do that, there's a blessing in that. So when the Bible tells you don't do something, it's because there's a curse in that. When the Bible tells you do something, it's because there's a blessing in that. Blessed is the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So when you're humble and meek in spirit, there's a blessing in that humbleness for you. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Mourn, in other words, for your sins. In other words, repent. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Can you see the blessing is within doing the things that God has told you to do? Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Can you see how the blessing is within the righteousness? The curse is within the unrighteousness. The curse is within the pride. The blessing is within the humility. Right? Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. The fact that you allow the Holy Spirit to purify your heart brings a blessing upon your life. 
when God, when the Bible says forgive that person, it's not because God wants to give you a hard time. It's because God knows if you really get to that place of forgiveness, there will be a blessing in it for you. So why is God telling you to forgive? Forgive because he wants to bless you. But just as there is a blessing in the obedience, there is also a curse in the dis disobedience. So when God says forgive and you choose to rebel and not forgive, there is a curse in that unforgiveness. What is the curse? It could be that you're carrying the weight of that unforgiveness on your shoulder year after year after year and it's draining you, pulling you down. You can't stop the mind chatter of everything they did to you. That's self-torment. It's called self-torment. It's called self, it's called self-abuse. You're bringing destruction and curses upon yourself. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are prosecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, prosecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me, says Jesus Christ. Rejoice and be glad because great is your reward in heaven, for in the same way they prosecuted the prophets who were before me. Hallelujah, praise God. God just doesn't sit in heaven and say, okay, mm, let me bless that person today and send them a blessing. Mm, let me curse that person today and send them a, a curse. It, it, it's not necessary. God has set rules. Plain and simple. You think, I don't want to follow rules. Guess what? You're following rules anyway. Everywhere you go, there are rules. There are rules among thieves. Have you heard honesty among thieves? Something like that. There are rules in school. You go to school, you have to follow rules. There are rules in your workplace. You go to workplace, you have to follow rules. There are rules wherever you go. There are rules in the restaurant. You have to sit down. You have to take your menu if you don't know what you're having. You have to wait till your turn. Once you order the food, there are rules. You have to wait. And, and then there are other rules. Once you eat, you have to pay. That's a rule. That's a rule. There are rules when you go to the grocery store. You take your trolley, you put food in, then you go to the till. Guess what? You have to pay. That's just how it is. So don't say I don't want to follow rules because that's just another deception of the devil. You're already following rules every single day of your life. Guess what? There are rules before you leave the house. You have to put some clothes on, right? <clears throat> You're already following rules. So it's not that God sits up there in heaven and blesses or curses people like that. No, he has given you rules. And when you follow by them, you say, I don't want to follow rules. Rules. Why would you not want to follow the rules of God that says love your neighbor? Why would you not want to follow his rules that says forgive? Why would, His rules are all about love. Why would you not want to follow his rules and, that says don't, don't have sexual intercourse with animals? Don't have sexual intercourse with your mom or your dad. Don't hate your neighbor. Why would you not follow, want to follow these rules? These are good rules, okay? So it's not that God sits in, heavens and starts, in heaven and starts blessing people and starts cursing people. He doesn't need to do that. He has given you rules from the beginning. He's very, very clear. It's your choice to follow them or rebel and do whatever it is that you're doing or whatever the world tells you to do, right? But know this, if you are following the rules of God, there is a blessing or blessings within can you see it's there maybe you can't see it but it's there there are blessings that are with within following the rules of god if you choose not to and do your own thing guess what there are curses hidden within the sin the rebellion that is of this world and you get to choose all right when adam when eve ate from the forbidden fruit the curse was in the fruit but on the outside, that fruit looked so appetizing. It looked so colorful. It looked so appealing to the eyes, right? Looks can be deceiving. And this is why the Bible says, walk by faith and not by sight. So what do I have to say to you? Repent. 
repent of your wrongdoing take everything to the holy spirit and say i repent and repent from your heart repent and start walking as god has called you to walk and stop with all the excuses no more excuses tell yourself the excuses stop now the excuses stop here And then when you're about to think something, say something or do something, pause and ask yourself, does the Bible speak for this thing or against it, this thing? If it's for, do it. If it's against, it's simple. Don't do it. And by not doing it and being obedient, you will find the blessing within that obedience. And that's just how it is. Right. My book, Spiritual Warfare, is finally out. The link is below. My other books, Worldly Life of Deception, New Age Occult to Jesus Christ, and Who is God? And I'm currently writing the last book, which is uh, This is Grace. If you need deliverance or healing, message me on social media. God bless you.